Hello beautiful people. In this video I want to explain advanced workflow that is possible using the Skin CMS. And it goes as follows. When you have your products listed inside Airtable, then you're adding a stock. The idea is that when you're running out of stock, so when the number is zero items, then show a different button on the product page. And that is exactly what we're going to be building today. That is something we will be building with a combination of tools. We will be using Freddy Vista, Airtable, Skin CMS, as we have done in the previous videos. And this integration we're going to do with Stripe and Make. Now all these tools like Stripe and Make, you can you can change that for a Zapier or N8N if you want to use something else than Make. And the same applies to Stripe. If you want to use PayPal or you want to use Shopify or WooCommerce, anything that has an API can do the same things over here. The main point for this video is to understand the principles, the concepts, and how to apply those things all together. So it might be a little, like this is an advanced video, so it might not be made for everyone. But yeah, let's get into that. So first of all, just to show you how this is going to be looking like, right now we have a button and I've detached it from the button that we had before. So right now this is not mapped. And the reason for that is because we're going to separate the text from the button as well as the link from the button. And that's what we're going to start with. Then we're going to show the text from Airtable onto the button. And then when people click on the button, they go to the relevant checkout page. In this case, the checkout link is made with Stripe. People fill in their information, they pay. And after payment, when it's the last item that's been bought, then when people refresh the tour or they come over again and they click on product one, it's supposed to show the button out of stock. All right, let's get into that. So we go into Airtable and I've already created this. This is a number field in Tagger. So you can just have these numbers filled in, whatever the stock is. Then I'm going to be building this button text over again to show you how I'm doing that. So, creating a formula, I call this button text, and we're going to say if, and then stock, which is this field over here, is more than zero, and then comma, then do something, like show something. So I can say like this, with, with these question brackets, I can present text. So what I'll be presenting is say, if it's more than zero, then show by. Okay, then comma, else. So if it's zero, that's basically what it's saying, or minus one or minus something, but that doesn't exist. So then say, again, the brackets out of stock. And that's it for the formula. So we have the button text and now when we change this to one, you'll see the button text is like so. We create this on zero and it becomes like this. So I'm going to put the first product, the Samari bookshelf on one. The Airtable racket ID, that's something important to know. With this formula, you, you can get that thing by itself. And it's just, Later on, we'll need this. Now, what we need to do is we need to have the button link and the button text. So we go to the skin CMS and we search for button and there we have button text, which is going to be with this one. And the button link, same thing. So like this, hit save. Now we click here. Now it shows buy instead of button. So we got the text now from Airtable. We click on it and we go to the Stripe checkout page. Great. So within Stripe, there is the possibility to put everything into test mode. Test mode means that we can create products, we can create checkout links, which are all not going to work, which are not really going to give you money. And that's a good thing because this way we can actually test what's going to happen with all the data and all that kind of stuff once the payment is complete so that we know that we got it all there. In the test mode, I've created the product. I've called it Samari Bookshelf. And as you can see, it has a title, it has a price, nothing so special about it. And then I've done two more things with this. First of all, I added this thing and I called this Airtable Record ID. 
as an extra item. So if this is the key and the value did the record ID of Airtable, which can be taken from here. When you use this formula, it will show up the record ID. And with this record ID, we can later on find the, the item within Airtable. The second thing I've done here is creating a checkout link. So I've created a payment link right over here. And with this payment link, I also added the meta that also Airtable record ID, same thing over here. That's about it. Then the other thing that I need to connect this later on with Make, the automation platform, is an API key. The API key can be taken from developers, API keys, and then over here, I got my token. I'm not going to reveal this, although it doesn't make so much, it's not super important, it's in the development test mode, but API keys are things that you need to be very mindful of. The next part here is to combine everything inside Make. When the checkout is complete, it needs to trigger Make some sort of scenario and do all sorts of things to update the inventory. So what we're going to do is when we create a new scenario, click over here. I already have it over here, Stripe. You say, watch events. I changed it to my sandbox connection, which is the development mode. So be aware of that. And when you do use the development mode, you have different API keys than from the actual environment. And I'm going to call this uh, tutorial Stripe Checkout Link Bookcase. Then over here, I'm going to search for Checkout. And uh, when the payment session is completed, so we hit OK. And now what I'm going to do right away is doing a test run. So I can say run this module only. So I filled in all my information, my email address, the 4242424242, uh, that is payment information from Stripe to test the credit card with. The date needs to be in the future and you can use any kind of one, two, three, whatever kind of thing on there. So I have all these things in place. And now I'm going to do a fake payment. So I'm going to pay now and you'll see the trigger is being triggered. And now the question is, what kind of information do we all have in here? So now I can go to my output bundles and there's lots of things in here that I can all find. But what I need is the Airtable stuff. So over here I have my record ID and this is the actual thing that I really need from this whole webhook thing. So now we've got all the information from Stripe with all the data. What we need to do now is we need to go to Airtable, find a record, get a record by its ID, select the base, select the table, and do the record ID. So now we just start searching for record ID. We hit OK. Now we can say, we can just run this scenario again. So we can run this once and try over again the same payment. Uh, instead, I'm going to just run this module only and it's asking me for the Airtable record ID to find, which is over here. I'm going to copy this and put that over here. And now what it does is it's taking all the relevant fields from that record that are there. And this is needed because we need to get the actual number of the stock. So we need to get the stock number, whatever that is, if it's 50 products or 100 products, and that is being retrieved with this get a record thing. And then in the next step in Airtable, we update that same record. So we go back over here again, furniture again, furniture again, record ID, record ID. In this case, it doesn't matter if I would select this one or this one, but I like to keep everything to the first thing, to the first module. And now what I can do is I can go to the stock right over here. And now from the previous step, the get a record, we can now say find that stock. Like there's all this information, we find stock. Okay, there's only one right now. So this one is dynamically being retrieved. And now we need to add a little formula minus one. That's it. So we hit OK. And now when we run this only, we get this thing over here. 
let's say the, the stock right now would be one as well just to test this module let's go to add table and see what's going to happen so right over here we have stock one okay so hit okay and it updates it and right now it's zero so this is the, the scenario that we need to run completely let's put this back to oh yeah and because it's now in zero it automatically changed the text as well to out of stock so let's just move this next to that yeah let's put this back to one and let's just go through the whole scenario over again hit save give this a name uh stripe check out tutorial skin cms hit save again we turn this one on i'm going to delete my old data yes these are all triggers sometimes you trigger things a little bit too often now we've got this scenario turned on and this is the moment of truth where everything is going to come together we're going to the 3d vista we're going to preview the tour we're going to open product one we hit as we can see, it's buy. So this is coming from Airtable, great. We click buy, all right. We fill in our emails and uh, fake credit card information. Like so. Then we hit pay. We see that, yeah, I was a little too slow here, but we see that this has been just executed. This has been like a few seconds ago. And now let's check also just in the back end on Airtable this has turned to zero out of stock so now when we go back to the virtual tour refresh the tour we go to product one and as you can see it's now out of stock which is amazing now to just give a little bit extra here this is where things become i think more interesting is to also change the color of this button this is the attributes, what we're gonna use within Skin CMS for the freelancer and the business packages. And this is just the icing on the cake. So we're going to duplicate this field button text. We're going to rename this to button color two. The only thing that we're going to change here is this stuff within here within the commas so this is needed right now we need to use the other commas the one with just like so and we put that in here as well and we just change the hex code over here so if the stock is more than show a nice color it's over here and this is like a dark color like this basically so let's do that button color 2 we need to map this now with the skin cms and this is where the magic happens now because we're in the freelancer or in the business package we can select an attribute background color and we hit save mapping we refresh the virtual tour and now we can see that the color has changed of this button now let's go back to a product that is in stock and we see the colorful button so we change it right over here to one again we need to refresh the tour and now it's a colorful buy button again. So I hope this tutorial has shown you the kind of possibilities that are possible with using Skin CMS, using an automation tool like Make to combine this with a checkout page or some payment processor like Stripe, and then to update the inventory and using formulas to say, okay, based on this condition, show me that text or based on this condition, show me that color. I think this is fundamentally changing the whole idea of what we can do creating virtual tours. I think this is like next level shit. Extremely excited to share this kind of stuff and to show more kind of possibilities like the one I've just shown you today. I hope you guys have an awesome day. All right, bye bye.